One of the first things we will talk about in this chapter of ideal gases is so that we have a more realistic vision of, of what gases are and what kind of gases surround us in our lives. Uh, it's good to remember that in the atmosphere uh, the, the gases that we breathe in mostly is about almost 80 percent a little bit less. It's nitrogen, it's inert, we have it in our body, we have it in the atmosphere, but it's it's the most abundant one, nitrogen, so N2, oxygen, it's about 20% of the, uh, of the gases in the atmosphere is oxygen, um, and the rest, around 1%, argon, even less, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. These are all gases in the atmosphere. It's not a coincidence, therefore, that the gases in our body uh, are very similar to the gases that exist in the atmosphere, whether because living beings put them in the atmosphere or because we use them. So we, we don't talk about it in biology, but we have a fair amount of nitrogen dissolved in our blood, of course. Uh, all gases dissolve in, in liquids to some extent. Um, nitrogen is pretty inert, but we have it dissolved in our body. Uh, of course, we use oxygen in our hemoglobin, carries oxygen to the to the cells uh, for breathing, uh, that's fairly well known. Uh, as a product of metabolism, we produce carbon dioxide, etc. Okay, and of course, there's always a component of the water liquid that is in water vapor. All right, these are the gases in our body. So two things I want you to notice when we list common gases. The first thing is that all the gases that we have listed here are either pure elements or are compounds made out of some specific elements and all of them come from a specific part of the periodic table. Well, in the noble gases, all of them are gases and then hydrogen. Uh, it's not a coincidence that uh, it's in this corner plus hydrogen. Actually, some periodic tables put hydrogen in the middle because for so many reasons it could be considered uh, to to be on the right side of the periodic table, but we will not talk about that. But it's not a coincidence that it's these elements that form gases. These elements are highly electronegative. That means they will they will likely form molecules. They are not willing to share uh, to form cations. They are not willing to uh, to to give away the electrons. So we will talk about why it is that these form gases. But I want you to realize that it's mostly uh, elements on this part of the periodic table that form gases. Something that also you have to know is that elements in their standard state, of course, when I say gases, I mean at room temperature. That's, that goes without saying. All elements go through a, a temperature range going from solid to liquid to gas. Um, but uh, at room temperature, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, and noble gases and hydrogen, they are all gases. Um, so in this chapter, when we talk about hydrogen gas, you will have to know that hydrogen gas is represented as H2. You will also have to know that nitrogen gas is N2, that oxygen gas is O2, and the same goes for fluorine and chlorine. Uh, noble gases, on the other hand, they are all atomic. Um, so pay attention to this because when we talk about a sample of nitrogen gas, you have to know that it's nitrogen there's two atoms of nitrogen together. Okay, uh, So let's talk a little bit about the atomic perspective of the three main units that we will talk about in this chapter. The three units that we will talk about is pressure, volume, and temperature. It's important for these three properties, the three, these three magnitudes, it's important to have both a macroscopic vision but also an atomic vision. For example, uh, when we talk about the kinetic energy, how fast molecules or atoms move in a gas, that is intimately related to the temperature. So every time we talk about higher temperature or lower temperature, it will implicitly mean that the kinetic energy of the particles of that sample increases or decreases at least on average. There is a distribution of temperatures. Not all atoms in a, in a sample or not all molecules in a gas sample will have the same velocity. Will, not all of them will have the same kinetic energy, but on average they will have uh, around the value and that's what we call temperature. 
the length that a particle travels without hitting the wall that is related to the volume. So from a particle perspective, uh, the the size of um, the size in which the the particle can move without hitting a wall that of course is related to the volume. And then one of the most important properties in this chapter is the force with which par the particle hits a, hits a wall. And that's what the pressure is. Pressure has units of force over surface and that will be very important to have both an atomic and a, and a macroscopic vision of pressure. The in this case, you can think of pressure as how hard and how many particles are hitting a wall. So notice that it's both how hard and how many per unit of surface they hit the wall. Okay, you will, we will have time to talk about this, but I want to make also a second, a second uh, distinction because these three properties pressure volume and temperature can be separated into either extensive or intensive properties a way to think about what's the difference between extensive and intensive properties is that extensive properties depend on the size okay and and they are global to the container for example so Let's read here. If you divide the gas container in two smaller containers, the properties that remain the same are intensive. So intensive properties, so say that you have a gas in a container at a given temperature, pressure, and its specific volume, and it has a certain number of moles. If you split this container in half, of course the volume will be halved, and the number of particles on each of the container will be halved. This means these properties, volume and number of moles, are extensive. Volume and number of moles are extensive. On the other hand, the pressure and the temperature will still be the same on both on both containers. That means that pressure and temperature, because they can be associated at any point, any point of your container will have a given temperature and pressure. That's what an intensive property is. So temperature and pressure are intensive properties because if you divide the gas container into smaller containers, the pressure and temperature do not necessarily need to change. I hope that makes some sense. And then we will, again, I want to make sure that people keep an eye on the unit of pressure. That will be the star magnitude of this chapter. Keep an eye on it, and in the next video, we'll keep talking about it.